Guys, thank you so much for joining me in today's episode. Today, I have a very special man in my, uh, in my heart. This is my brother-in-law, Jose Ricky Cuba Hernandez. I don't know how many more nicknames you got. He is uh, my wife's husband. They actually, um, you know, got into a relationship together the day, I think it was my birth, my 19th birthday. I remember that. You guys were in prom and whatever. Um, but you guys have been together, what, like, like over 10 years now? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. 2010. Yeah, so coming up 12 years in May. Look at that. High school sweethearts got married. I'm not supposed to know this date. You can know this date. 2016, yeah. 2016, <laughs> six years. Wow. So um, and he's he's a pretty fairly new dad. Uh, about yes, a year am. old. Uh, his kids are about a year old. So want to have him on. Jose, I'd like to ask, you know, how many kids you got? What are your kids' names? Okay. Well, I have two. Twin boys, uh, Nicholas and Lucas. And what would you say is your happiest moment so far as a dad? Right now, the happiest moment was the day they were born for me. I mean, because I'm they're still fresh, you know. They're not, they're not. They'll be a year old next month. So right now, the happiest moment that I can honest, it's the day they were born. I mean, I'm everything is a. I'm happy for everything, but right now, the happiest moment is when I saw them come out. What was that moment like? What did that feel like for you? Um, I don't know, man. It's inexplainable. Um, first time holding him, you know, after him being in the belly for so long, because Nicholas came out first. Mm -hmm. So when Nicholas came out, it was just like a surreal moment for me. I was like, oh, man, I'm a dad. You know, it was like so unreal. Yeah. And then for your sister, she was still in the process of trying to push out Lucas. So everything was just happening so fast. Uh, but when he came out and I held him, it was like, I don't know, man. It's just the feeling was, I felt warm, you know, I felt like a load of responsibility just hit me on my shoulders, you know, but like, this is it. This, this, this is my, this is my son. This is, this is one of my sons. The next one's on the, on the way out. <laughs> it was just this crazy feeling, man. I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop smiling, you know, from ear to ear. And uh, yeah. Dude, I can see I, now. I, I love it. And the reason I ask is because, you know, um, you know, the guys who are either this, this is probably this podcast is probably more for the guy who is either wanting to have a kid. Maybe they're expecting and, and they, they, they see this and maybe they're a couple months into the into the pregnancy. Like, yo, like this is what I got to look forward to. So I'm really excited to hear about your experience, what's worked for you, what, what you would do the same differently. And if you were to go. Like, tell me, what was the, what, what was like the process of getting pregnant like for, for the both of you, or at least in your experience? As in, what do you mean? Like for her? Like, what was it like? So, so like, I know some of the story, um, like when it came to like, all right, like we want to have a baby. What was that journey like for you guys? So we knew we wanted to have a baby. Um, I really wanted to, I guess, be as stable as possible. Cause obviously, you know, I was in the coast guard. Um, then I got out and I went to school, um, she had already gotten the job in Elizabeth. So we were kind of like, all right, we're pretty stable. You know, I was already about to become a teacher. So I was like, we're pretty stable. Um, let's do this. Let's have a baby, you know? Um, and <clears throat> we were successful in the first try. Um, but things didn't pan out. Um, unfortunately, the way the, the, the pregnancy happened the first time, um, it was an atopic pregnancy, which is the baby got stuck in her fallopian tubes. Mm -hmm. and there was really nothing that could be done um and that was i guess <clears throat> it was so early in the pregnancy you know for her for both of us um we were kind of like all right it happened we'll try again um and then the second time around came and it was like all right we got it you see uh the baby's there you know whatever it is boy or girl it's there um <clears throat> we went to go to the doctor we saw him or now I know that it's a him. I'm going to say him a whole bunch of times, but uh -huh. we saw him because originally there was only one. We saw him and I was like, all right, he's there. He's growing. The doctor said he's fine. <clears throat> and then about a week after that visit, something happens, you know, mm -hmm. and she runs upstairs. Um, there's some stuff going on. So we're like, all right, it was a Saturday. Mm -hmm. She was like, you know what? I'm not going to stress this. 
I'm not going to stress this. I'm going to wait and see. We'll, we'll make an appointment for Monday. We'll go see the doctor on Monday. Was that you who said that? She who said that or both? She said it because the first one, the first time she was pregnant, it was like a like really stressful situation. Like she was trying and trying and she's like, why can't I do it? Why can't I get pregnant? So it was a lot of stress. And I told her just be as stress-free as possible before this second pregnancy. Um, she was like, you know what? You're right. So she was very... She didn't stress it. She didn't do anything. She's like, you know what? We'll see what happens Monday. I don't want to put all these thoughts in my head. We'll see what happens Monday. So we go to the doctor on Monday and sits her down. <clears throat> he's checking, he's checking, he's checking. I've already seen, since I've already seen the baby, I've already seen the baby. I, we both looked at the camera and we're like, okay, he's there. Mm -hmm. You know, he's healthy. He's there and he's looking and he's looking and he's looking. And I'm like, why? We're both like, why is he still looking? You know, we've already seen him. You know, what is he looking for? Yeah. So he's looking, he's looking, he's looking. And then finally he's stopped and he's like, okay, so baby A is good. And baby <laughs> B is good. And we're like, what? So the, the doctor's known for being, uh, he's, he's sarcastic sometimes. You know, he's funny. Yeah. So I thought he was joking. And there was a student a doctor in there, I guess doing her practical. Um, mm -hmm. She could become a doctor. And I look at her and I was like, he's joking, right? He's joking, right? And then she smiled and she's like, no. I was like, doctor, you're joking, right? You're joking. He's like, nope. There are two babies in there. I was like, bro, we were just here last week and you said there was one. And he looks at me and says, now there's two. Wow. So it was, that was crazy. That was crazy. Dude, I, I love that. And I'm curious, like, break this up for me too. So like, let me recap again i don't like to assume and just also for someone who's following along just kind of like here's where we are so far like you guys want to get pregnant you want to be stable secure like most people like look i want to have my life like kind of in order before we start something and then you mm -hmm. do it You're like you know what we're gonna get pregnant you guys are trying and then you know you have this one pregnancy and i remember you know mm -hmm. I, I remember how, how how great it felt just to like hear that and just like wow and then find out it's ectopic ec ectopic i believe and like, mm -hmm. like, oh man, like now we can't have the baby. Or like, like the baby's not going to be, be there. And they're like, all right. It sounds like you also mentioned like there's some stress after that too. Like, oh man, like why can I, like, why can I get pregnant again? You guys get pregnant again. Feel good. Like, oh, there's one baby. Something's, she feels off. It's like what's, what she's going to do now this time is like, I'm not going to stress about it. I'm just going to relax. And especially because of the last one, it was so early in the pregnancy. It just mm -hmm. like. We know the, the emotions are not, I'd love to go there if you're okay with that. Yeah. Um, but then like, okay. And then you got this beautiful surprise. Like you guys got two babies coming along. Did I miss anything there? Did I put anything nope, out nope. of order? Nope. That's, that's, uh, that's the order. Yeah. So <laughs> if you don't mind, I'd love to go into again, like that moment. Cause there are people who are, who have been trying and there are people who, probably feel discouraged, heartbroken. There's a lot of dreams and stuff associated with, with becoming a parent. And like, what was that experience for you guys? I know you mentioned it was early on, but like that ectopic pregnancy. So it was, and it was stressful because you see, you can see other people having, you know, having their kids, having their babies. And you're like, yo, is it at one point it was like, she was like, is it me? You know, do I have to get checked? And I was like, no, it's not you. Um, mm -hmm. Not, you know, we're not even, <clears throat> it's not like we're old, you know, and, and, and that could be a problem. We're not even 30 yet. Well, I'll be, I'll be 30 next month. Yeah. We're not even 30 yet, you know? Uh -huh. Um, And uh, there's just a whole com bunch of conversations, but we, we, we stuck together. And the most important part is just communicate with your partner um, <clears throat> and try to figure it out. Like I told her, you cannot stress this. Um, when the time comes, the baby will come, you know, if you add, I'm the type of person, if you add all that stress on yourself, you know, mm -hmm. it's not good. It's not good for you physically, let alone mentally, you know, adding all that stress. Don't, don't take all that stress on your own. Mm -hmm. Talk, you can talk to your partner, you know, tell them how you feel. They should be able to, 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 to reciprocate that feeling, you know, um, what's the word, uh, empathetic, like, mm -hmm. is it, yeah. you know, feel that, yeah. feel that way, you know, um, communicate and keep trying is all I can really, is what I can say. Um, for us, it was just the biggest thing. Yeah. Try and try to alleviate as much stress as possible from our lives, because if it's going to come, it's going to come, you know, the time will come. Um, 
but during that time, yes, there was a, there was some stress, and we just had to talk to each other and say, you know what, the stress stops here. We're gonna wait. We're gonna be patient, and when the baby comes, the baby will come. And I'm gonna be honest, man. As soon as we did that, it was, yeah, the boys came. <laughs> so I, I love that, and it, it's so. I interviewed yesterday, um, my friend, like good guy Matt. Yeah. Uh, he's also, he's, his kid, Mike is a year and a half now. So it was interesting to hear the same thing where he's like, yeah, like we have to slow down. And then yeah. it happened. And That's the biggest thing. Yeah, you, you try to, you don't want to rush it. You know, you don't want to rush it because. And it's with anything in life. Anything. Yeah. You don't, life. yeah. You don't want to rush it. I mean, even now I see like the boys aren't a year yet. And this year, like, I know people say that the years go by fast. Not for me, man. I've, I've, Full effect have felt this entire year of their lives. More or so because there's two of them. So, you know, it's like double trouble, you know, double the hassle. Mm -hmm. But I've, since day one, man. So that there is no need to rush, you know, take your time, make sure you enjoy the little things, you know, and just keep living your life accordingly. Mm -hmm. And just know that if you keep trying, you know, it'll happen. But just keep living your life. Don't add that stress into your life you know, um, and everything should be fine. And I, I love the healthy approach. Cause I remember like, like, um, you know, when my sister was okay with me, like talking like about this, like, like my feelings about it with someone else. And I'm like, Oh man, like they're like, is she okay? How's she doing? Like, that's hard. Like there was a friend who like, she had an ectopic pregnancy and she was like, she was heartbroken from it uh, for a while. So it was just, the way that you guys show up um, is very commendable, like in how healthy and just how loving it is to one another and how supporting it is. Cause again, it's like, look, it's okay. It happened. We're mm -hmm. going to try it again. We're going to move forward. And yeah. I, I love that support that you guys have for each other. I'm curious too, like what has, what was it like being pregnant during the pandemic? What, what, what were you focusing on? What, what were you thinking about? What, how did you guide uh, you and your wife and how did she help you guide you too? So it was the being pregnant part. Wasn't that, I would say it wasn't that difficult. Like the actual of her being pregnant, she was tired a lot, you know, so she used a lot of that time to, to sleep. Uh -huh. um, you know, your sister, she likes to take a, take a good nap. So those two boys that were putting her to sleep all the time. Um, but she, she used that time to, to, to sleep, to rest. Um, we would go, the only places we really go because everything was shut down, obviously was to go see, uh, your, your mom and then go to my parents. And that was our routine. You know, Monday through Friday, we worked, uh, we'd come home, we decompress, we relax. And then that Saturday and Sunday was reserved to go see, um, our parents and, and just enjoy that time together. Um, but I wouldn't say it was a difficult time because we didn't really, we weren't really trying to go out, you know, especially mm -hmm. her and her and the way she was in her situation, you know, um, she was just like, I'm tired. I don't need to do anything, you know? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, that part wasn't difficult. I don't think it was difficult at all for us. Um, Cause we still got to see family, which is the biggest mm -hmm. thing. Our friends, we would FaceTime, you know, we'd, we'd FaceTime our friends uh, <clears throat> when possible. We'd see them. Mm -hmm. obviously there was some big group gatherings um because i could have been so we'd see our friends every once in a while but i think the biggest thing for her was just time to decompress time to relax time to just after because she was still working you know she was working up until the day she gave uh she gave uh she gave birth to them so mm -hmm. her biggest thing was let me just relax now i can relax now i can mm -hmm. i can stop worrying about work and i can relax because she was working up until the day yeah she she we went to the hospital to go and have the boys and, and i'm curious because it's been very interesting to see how people have reacted and what's come up for them during this time of the pandemic like there's like you and i both know like people who have been stressed and just very fearful and like i'm not talking to anyone um it, it almost sounds like they're afraid to talk to you over the phone just that that's how scared they are and like i'm curious like what was your approach um so for you at the, at the beginning we were when it first happened obviously and then 
people started passing away and some people started getting a lot more sicker or a lot more sick, I'm sorry, a lot more sick than others. It became a little bit of a concern, obviously, because she was pregnant. We had and we had the atopic pregnancy. So we were really hesitant, you know, I would say this to, 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 to go out. But we would, like the restaurants, for example, we, yeah. we, weren't, we weren't trying to go out anywhere. If we wanted food, we'd order it uh-huh. in that case. But yeah, we were we didn't want to see anyone because we didn't want to risk getting sick, obviously not risk her getting sick. Being that she's pregnant, who knows what could have happened or, or, or what the situation might have been or how sh- her body would have taken it, um, the virus that is. So that's why we were just at home and we left it for we left our our, our that free time to go enjoy it with family and then with friends when the situation permit especially more so when it was hotter out and we could actually be outside mm-hmm. you know be outside and in that case socially distance whatever the case may be at the time and again we weren't hanging out with a lot of people it was like we'd go see two of our friends you know mm-hmm. and then it was just us and we'd be outside either in the front <clears throat> in the front yard the backyard just hanging out so we were hesitant to go out Anywhere there was a lot of places where we hesitated to talk to people over the phone. Not at all. We would FaceTime friends. We'd call friends, call family members, FaceTime family members. We just didn't want a big group gathering because yeah. they were saying that's 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 the biggest uh, case where you can get sick. So we were like, you know, we'll avoid, we'll avoid that. You know, we're not going to completely enclose ourselves and shut ourselves off from the world, obviously, with this. For me, it was huge. You know, for my family, it was huge that she's pregnant. We're, we're about to have kids. Um, so I didn't want us to kind of enclose ourselves and then not let our family know, like, oh, we're pregnant. This is the situation. So I didn't want that to happen. So we would talk. We would still talk to people, but, but we were hesitant to go out. And to Just go making out. sure you guys feel safe. Exactly. Um, again, it's, it's that sense of, like, how can we stay calm? Around, like, just enjoy the process. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. And one thing I've always loved about you just coming into like our lives too, is just like, again, you, you have like awesome family ties. And I just love how your family's together and how like you, your family's always made me feel like I'm family. I'm like, Oh, like I'm just, I'm the other guy. Um, just make sure you give me some pernil. Um, no, but um, <laughs> yeah, my, my question for you is like, what are you doing? You know, again, there's you and my sisters, but I'm talking to you. Like, what are you doing on your part like that, that you're raising the boys um, similar to how you were raised? So similar to how I was raised. I mean, just being supportive, you know, being there, Mm -hmm. being present, being in the moment. Um, My dad worked a lot, obviously, but we were we immigrated here from the Republic. So he worked a lot. And obviously, I understood why he worked a lot because he had to provide for him. my mom, my sister, myself. So I'd see my dad more so obviously after work. And then I wouldn't say all every weekend, you know, so I want to be there more mm-hmm. than my father was for me, I guess you would say. Not that I have anything or hold anything against my dad. Great. He's great, great father. Um, if I've ever needed anything, he's always been there for me. And that's what I want to provide for my kids. If I if they ever feel they need anything, they can come to me. They can talk to me. They can ask me. Um, as far as being raised how I was raised, I mean, I don't have – based on pictures because I'm not, I'm, I, I'm not a, a person who remembers that far yeah. in the past. Based on pictures, just being there. I have a lot of pictures with my mom, with my dad. Mm. So just being there um, – and in the moment and present and, and playing with them when I can. And, and just for me, it's just being there, just being a dad and making sure that they see in pictures or in videos that, oh, Bobby was there, you know. So I have a few questions to lead up to my one big question or not a big question, but just my main question. So like when you say like you had you didn't get to spend as much or like dad wasn't there as much, how much time would you say he was there? Like, like you just said, like after five and sometimes on the weekend so after work yeah and then he would he would he would work some weekends um we spend more time i guess together as i got older because he would take me to mm-hmm. his job sites with him mm-hmm. so i spent more time with him there um not the way i wanted to uh yeah. but but we spent time and there was a lot of laughs 
uh, but I would spend time with him there. So in honesty, how much time? I mean, after- Not, not an exact number, but did you feel like it was enough time? Or did you feel like, like, it sounds like you, you also wanted more time. I definitely wanted more time, yeah. Okay. Of course, you know, you want to spend more time with your dad. So yeah, yeah, definitely more time. And the time that you guys had, would you say it was like just in front of a TV? Or would you say it was more more than something, more or something else? No, he, he, more than something else. If it was in front of the TV, like we'd watch a movie or something, it'd be like after five, like after work. We'd watch TV or we'd just talk. Um, he'd talk to me about, you know, how was school? How was this? How you doing? <clears throat> But when it came to, to work, there was more. It was like he was trying to teach me because he's uh, he did uh, electricity. He did carpenting. He did, you know, you know, my dad, jack of all he's, trades. He's, he's not <laughs> a jack know? of all trades. He's a master of a lot of trades. <laughs> <laughs> but you, know, you know, my dad, you know, my dad. So he would teach me stuff in his in his way. Um, I guess the same way his father taught him. So a lot of yelling involved and a lot of <laughs> smiling from me. But, you know, it's my dad. Um but we would spend more time there and that was more face to face. That was his way of spending time with me, you know, mm-hmm. taking me to the job site and teaching me. I guess that's the way he was because he was raised, you know, on a farm with his dad and my grandfather, the way that man looked, it was like, you came home from work or you came home from school. All right, let's go hit the field. Let's go work a little bit. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of probably what he wanted to instill in me, which he did, you know, um, hard work pays off you know but we would spend more time there and I and as I get older I appreciate that time because he took the time to to take me to this job site where he didn't have to so that I could be there you know with him and work and learn you know so I I love that because so like for someone not listening to this like yeah like he's my dad I like him he's pretty cool and, and we got to spend some time like yeah he took me to work but like for me, knowing you and your dad, like you guys are like best friends. Like I see you guys, I've never seen like a father and son like laugh with each other so much. Um, like, like just the conversations you guys have, just like, it just feels like it's almost like, um, uh, what is it called? The, the, the relationship I see with Pastor Jay and his dad. So that's my second interview. Pastor Jay married me, if you guys haven't seen it. But he was like, uh, well, seeing the episode, not my marriage. Um, <laughs> but he's um, like just that relationship. It reminds like that relationship reminded me a lot of like the relationship I saw with you and your dad. And to me, even talking to, again, uh, Matt yesterday was like, so his story was his dad was a firefighter. So he would see his dad probably every um, two days and then one day off, two days. I think it was like mm-hmm. that. Or it was like one day and then two days off, one day, two days. And I was like, and it was just so crazy to see like the lack of time that sometimes we have with our dads because, you, you know, sometimes dads are the only ones who work or dads like are very focused on working and providing. Like sometimes that time can be used greatly. And the reason I bring all this up is for the dad who's listening to this, who doesn't have time, who thinks I got to make, like, I want to provide, but like, I don't have more time and I don't want to sacrifice this. I was like, something tells me like there's, you don't need seven days to create mm-hmm. that quality time and create that relationship with your kid. Um, Cause again, everything that you describe, like this is news to me. I'm like, really? Like, I thought you guys like, were like hanging out all the time. Cause you guys are like so close. Yeah. Yeah. As I got older, I got to see like when I was younger, you know, did I want to go to those job sites? No, I was a kid, you know, I wanted to be outside. I wanted to, play video games I wanted to you know go outside and and play with my friends you know Mm -hmm. so as a kid I wasn't really didn't really want to go you know I was like oh my god it's Saturday and I gotta go spend it over there working with my dad you know but as I get now that I'm older you know I get to see that maybe that was my dad's way of saying I want to spend more time with you you know I still I I have to work because I have to provide but I want to spend more time with you and since he was the one running the show at whatever project he was doing, he's like, you know what? I'll bring my son. And obviously he would talk to the person. Oh, this is my son. Da, 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 da. He's going to be here with me. And <clears throat> I was old enough where I could hand him, you know, nails, <laughs> you know, yeah. Oh, I need to drill. Oh, I got you. So I got to learn a lot of that. You know, I got to learn a lot of, uh, of tools. I got to learn a lot. Cause that, you know, at first he'd take me to a site and he's like, Oh, get me, um, get me, a." 
a crescent wrench. And I'm like, I don't know what a crescent wrench is, dog. You know, I can get you a wrench wrench. I, I know what a wrench, a regular wrench is. So he would teach me that. So he got to teach me that. Maybe that was his way of saying, look, I want to teach you and I want to spend time with you. But I only saw that as I got older. In the moment I was young, I might have taken it for granted, you know, because I didn't want to be there. I never actually told him, like, I don't want to be here because that's just, I felt like that's too, that, that would be too much to tell to my father who has given me everything that he could, you know? Ooh. And even when he wasn't where he couldn't spend time with me, you know, I'm not going to say he bought me, you know, because I don't think yeah. yeah, he 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 would he would get me things, you know, and be like, oh, uh, let's look what I found. And he came back when GameCube was big. He's like, oh, look what I found. He came home with a GameCube and a whole bunch of games. And I'm like, dude, this is awesome. Yeah. Thanks. And then another day he came with the original Xbox, with the big, big, big brick, the big Xbox. Uh -huh. He's like, look what I found. I was like, you found this? Like, dude, what are you talking about? You know, so he came with stuff. And I was like, oh, this guy's awesome. I love this guy. Um, <laughs> he would do things like that. And I'm not going to say he bought me because, like I said. Well, I, it's I, not. It's just That's just a thoughtful thing to do. He was thinking about yeah, it. Was, he got yeah, you. Yeah. It's not like he bought yeah. you things that you didn't care about that were just arbitrarily expensive. And I never, and the thing is, I never, I never asked for it. Mm. Like, I never said, oh, dad, I want this new system. You know, I don't, I never said I want this new system. I want this new you know, I was just like, all right, I'll enjoy what I have, you know. And at the time, what did I have? I had the, I had, I had the PS1, I had the PlayStation, you know, and that's all I had. That was my, that was my thing, you know, and I was happy with that. But when he came with all this stuff, I was like, oh, man, what? Right. Um, so <clears throat> he would do things like that. And again, that was just out of the blue, you know. I never asked for it or anything. And that's, that's those, those are moments where I was like, oh, man dad cares bro dad's out here buying stuff i don't even know anything that is awesome man you know on top of, of having those moments where, where we're together i do think there is like him bringing you to your to the job site even my mom bringing me to to work sometimes and just like as we get older we get to see more of like oh wow like look at what our parents did and like yeah. at the time we don't really grasp it like to me it was like my mom like she worked four jobs at one point and i'm like she worked as a, she, she was like a postal worker and, um, man, she, yeah. and just like thinking of like, just talking to her about that. And was like, yeah, like I just did what I had to do. And it wasn't that I had to do it. It was like, she wanted to do it because she wanted to do it for us. And it's just like, as a kid, even very early on, I, de I, I don't know if it's a value that you get instilled or maybe it's something you see. Like you, I think kids see more than, more than we think. Um, I know that was my experience of like, they can see how hard you work and they mm -hmm. do see the value. So I think I do see that. Um, well, let's, let's go a little bit differently. Like you mentioned the time thing. What are you doing differently than the way, than what your parents did for you? So when it comes to time, uh, sometimes my father would come home and we would spend some time together, but he would also go to work even on the weekdays. Where I'm doing it differently is I don't have that extra um, responsibility when it comes to work. I want to spend as soon as I come out of work, you know, and I'm, I'm I've left work behind my time. I want to spend them with them as much as I can, mm -hmm. you know. So, for example, I, right in front of me, I have their play mat and all their toys. When I come home from work, that's where I spend my afternoon. Mm -hmm. And that play mat with those boys playing. Um, and that's where I want to do things differently when, as they get older, <clears throat> you know, me, bro, before the pandemic, I'd play flag football and I'd play basketball. Yeah. So as soon as the weather hits and they can walk, man, as soon as they can walk, I'm buying them a little, a little hoop and a little, I'm going to have a hoop over there on one side and I have a little sock in it on the other. And that's yeah. what we're going to do. We're just going to play. And I want to take them outside and I want to spend time with them outside. I want them. I want to enjoy that time with them. I want to, I want to, to. Even more so now that I'm, you know, I'm a teacher. So I'm a teacher. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids don't want to go outside. A lot of kids just want to be on their, you know, playing video games, which is cool. You know, I play video games too sometimes, but I think there's a time and a place. You know, if it's cold out and it's super cold out, and there's like nothing really to do. All right, play your game. That's cool. Mm -hmm. If it's beautiful out, you need to enjoy that time. You need to enjoy that weather. And I want to be able to enjoy that weather with my sons, you know, with my kids. So, that's what I want to do. I want to spend even that minuscule time that I get to spend. I want to spend that time with my kids. I want to make sure that when I get out of work, 
my time is for them, especially now since they're so little. Um, so right now, that's my biggest thing. Again, and I'm saying this more so because they're still babies, you know. Um, the situation might be different for a father of, of a 15-year-old or a 16-year-old. Mm-hmm. But for me, it's just spending that time with them since so, so, so they're so young. And even as they get a little older and they start walking and, and maybe they like basketball, maybe they like soccer, maybe they don't like that and they like baseball, whatever, whatever they, they, whatever they want to do, I oh. want to do it with them. Cool. You know? I love that. And what would you say is your proudest moment so far as a dad? Proudest. proudest and I would say this so even go like the time frame again. They're, they're about to be a year old, but I would even look like even the pregnancy, like during that time, I would even consider that to look at. Like, what would you say is your proudest moment so far? Oh, man. Since they're so young, I mean, I don't know what the, I'm, I'm <laughs> every day is a blessing, I can say that. Um, proudest moment so far. <clears throat> Being present. Again, for me, the biggest thing is always being present, um, having them look back, you know, as I get older at pictures and saying, oh, look, dad was there, you know, um, that's, a, that's what I can say. I mean, when they when they make it to one, my proudest moment will be they made it to one. They made it to <laughs> a year. We are. We made it. First year is done. So I can I can say February 19th. That'll definitely be my proudest moment. Year one. We did it. You hectic. saying that makes me think you're like some 1780s farmers. Like, yes, we got one kid alive this year. Let's do we it got, again. One, no, so it's, one it's more just, for the fields. It's just so, 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 it was so, it was so difficult, man. It was so difficult with two. And we have Jack, so it's like, yeah, yeah. It was, it was hard, man, with twins. It was definitely, you're not waking up for just one baby. You don't take turns. There's no Ooh. such thing as turns. It's like, I'll wake up and then, especially early on. It's not like, okay, I'll wake up this time. I got it. Mm-hmm. Or, or, or she'll say, I wake up this time. I got it. It was like nonstop. And you know, they're babies. So they're going to do what they're going to do. They, they can't express themselves. They cry. So yeah, it was difficult, man. But my proudest moment is just being there for them now, you know, um, doing whatever I can as a father to, to provide for them, to, to, help them to mm-hmm. even in the th- little things they needed now when they got COVID you know mm-hmm. my wife Carolina she was she was overwhelmed mm-hmm. I told her don't do that to yourself mm-hmm. look at them look at them they're sick but it's not bad you know it's 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 like a for them it was more so it was more so stuffy nose mm-hmm dry cough in the beginning then congestion but it wasn't it wasn't bad it was just the fact for her it was just the fact that it was covid you know it's like oh yeah my kids have covid you know and 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 then everything that's happened in the world my kids have covid oh my god what is the outcome so i told her just look at them they sleep a good amount in the night you know nothing great nothing nothing they're not sleeping just a little bit they're not sleeping a lot They're, they're sleeping their usual amount they're not eating as much but they're drinking their milk so we just have to handle it with what we see. So we just have to relax. We can't be overwhelmed. Um, <clears throat> and we just have to take it day by day. So with that, I, I said that was my proudest moment. We, we handled that situation well because she was a little overwhelmed. And I told her it's okay. It's going to be okay. They're going to be all right. And then your mom came and helped out a big time a lot. So that was great. Um, but yeah, that, that was big. Because when they yeah. had that... It was scary. It's that skill that I see you guys have cultivated and that you kind of lift each other up during it is like that present moment. And just even like, again, like this goes with anything. I was speaking to an outstanding mom uh, yesterday morning uh, just about like the stress and like she's having panic attacks and she's like, she's like worried about like she's waking up at three in the morning, just like, all right, like I'm awake. I'm not going back to bed. I'm like so stressed out to to go, like not knowing if she's going to wake up. It's just like, the hypotheticals leading the thoughts that we that we kind of follow take us mm-hmm. out of the present moment of what is actually real and we start thinking about the worst sometimes it's very easy for us to go towards the worst case scenario and i think that there's a a cool skill that you guys have cultivated is like 
yes, we don't know what could happen, but let's look at what is happening. Exactly. The kids are this way. We are this way. If anything, mm -hmm. like, um, if we didn't get tested, it's a cold, basically. Yep. I mean, that's 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 probably what it would have been, you know, that, that yeah. for us, it would have been like, oh, they, they just have a cold, you know. But the fact that we got tested and we got to see and then everyone, you know, everyone's positive. <clears throat> it was I can see how it was scary and I can see how it was stressing her out a little bit. So all I could do there to be supportive was say it's going to be OK. We have to live day by day. We have to see, we have to treat what we can see. And even the doctors are like, just treat what you can see because they're babies, you know, they're, they're under, they're under a year old. So a lot of medicine that you would prescribe to a baby, you can't, or to a, to a toddler, you can't prescribe to them. So we just have to see, treat what we can see. That's mm -hmm. all we can do. We can see and then go from there. So Yeah. That, that, that's, that's a, as you're talking, I'm like, I need to have a conversation with you. Just like, how are you, like, how do you stay in the present? Cause that, that's a skill that again, like a lot of stress, a lot of anxious, even a lot of judgment that we have about ourselves goes from like, what if I did this? What Like it, it takes us out of the present and it takes us out of what is. And we just go into these hypotheticals. Um, no, I love it. And, and like for, for the dad out there, for, for the man who maybe he's, maybe he's going through an ectopic, pregnancy right now what is some advice that you have for him support your wife um do the best that you can to be there for her um you can't you can never know what she's going through physically so just try to be supportive let her talk hear her out let her vent um be there and just be as supportive as you can. Honestly, that's all I can say is be as supportive as you can see if she needs anything, whatever help she needs um, and be there for her, you know, moral self for, for your, for yourself. Cause we don't know physically what they're going through. This is something that this is a change in their body. Um, and all we can do is be there for them because this is, this is, I can see it being a bigger toll on her, you know, than on us. Because again, they're physically going through all that. And who knows the mental toll that can take on a person with their body changing the way it is. So what I can say is, yeah, be supportive, be as helpful as you can and hear her out. Cause you got, you, you, this is a team, it's a team, it's, it's, it's teamwork, you know, it's teamwork. So you, you need both of them, both of you to work. Um, so just be there. I love that. And what is some advice that you have for the for for a man who they're pregnant and, and baby's coming you know either soon or a couple of weeks couple of months what is some advice <laughs> you have for them for the pregnancy i'll say this you can never be too prepared too prepared um when the boys were coming you know i was doing everything everything possible to be like right, i have to be ready i have to be ready fix their cribs make their cribs boom their cribs are done uh make their bassinets boom their bassinets are done um, make sure we have uh, uh, the formula we need, make sure we have the, the, the pampers we need, make sure we have, uh, uh, you know, you can never, as much as you may think that you're ready, you know, and this is not to, 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 to sound negative or anything. They'll trick you, man. You're not going to be ready. There's going to be some things. There's going to be, they're going to throw curveball at you. Okay. They're going to throw some curveballs at you and that's okay. Um, that's okay. Just try to hit those curveballs um keep 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 trucking keep going and do the best thing that you do the best that you can um have patience have a lot of patience um, um that's for when they come um have a lot of patience um just know that they can't communicate so there will be a lot of crying like this was big for me you know the the Having patience and knowing that the cries that come every two hours is because they're either hungry or they've done something in their diaper and they don't know how to say, dude, feed me or bro, you got to change me, you know? Um, so that's their way of saying that, you know? So there'll be a lot of cries. So just have patience and you can never be too prepared. So 
don't ever think like, oh, I'm ready. And then they throw a curveball at you and they're like, oh, this is not supposed to happen. I was ready. No, it's not the way it is. You can never be, never, you can never be too ready. They're, they're going to throw some curveball at you. There's going to be some things where you're like, oh man, I thought I had that covered. It's okay. It's Ooh. okay. Just move forward, move along. Um, and everything will work out. Everything will be okay. So. What is some advice that you have for the dad who is just like, he, all right, the babies are here. Maybe he's a couple of weeks in, maybe he's a two, three months in. What is some advice that you have for him? So the baby's here. Yeah. Enjoy the moments. Um, enjoy the cries, <laughs> the high pitched cries. Um, enjoy holding them in your arm, you know, or in the palm of your hand. Uh, enjoy laying them in the bassinet until they can't. Um, just enjoy the little moments with them. Those little moments that enjoy the smell. Man, baby smell, bro. It's the best. The best. <laughs> Holding them right here and just taking that in. Enjoy that. Enjoy the little moments. Enjoy the small things. The little things. Enjoy the little things. The baby smell will forever be the thing, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Put that in uh, yeah. in the air freshener. Um, yeah. <laughs> they need to make one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, what about a dad who is a father to twins? What is some advice that you have for him? Father to twins. My guy. No. Um, <laughs> patience, man. For him, it's the biggest thing is patience because they're going to cry a lot. They're going to feed off each other. Um, have patience um, with not only them, with your wife that she's going through it, um, especially if she's if she's breastfeeding, um, because I know that takes a toll on their body. It took a toll on on Carolina, you know. So I can understand that. Um, have patience with her. Have patience with the babies. Um, you're not gonna sleep that much, and that's okay. So <clears throat> we can just push that aside. <laughs> um, be supportive to her and provide as much as you can for the babies. And I'm not saying provide as in like, you know, economic wise, provide with, you know, getting the milk ready, um, changing the diaper, um, the little things, just be supportive in every way that you can. And yeah, have patience because they're going to cry a lot. They're going to feed off each other. It's going to, sometimes you're going to feel like you're overwhelmed. I mean, yeah, you're definitely going to feel overwhelmed. So just breathe in, breathe out, and take it day by day. And similar to whoever's having a single kid, you know, enjoy the little things. You have to still enjoy those little things. Those little things will make up for for whatever overwhelming feeling you have or or whatever time you, you, you felt like you lost your patience. Like, oh, my God, I can't take this. I can't take it. Just relax. Think about the little things that you do enjoy. And then the, those those problems will just kind of shy away, you know. That's all I can say. Love it, man. And this question is not for, for me. It's not for any dad out there specifically. It is for two people. What is something that you want to tell Nicholas and Lucas? What do I want to tell them? Um, I'm here for you in any way and anything that you need. Um, don't ever be afraid to come talk to me. I will be there for you. I will be there for you as much as I can. Um, and yeah, know that you can talk to me. You can talk to me about anything. Um, I love the both of you with all my heart, the happiest day. One of the happiest days of my life are the day that you guys came into my life. Um, so know that if you ever need anything, do not be afraid to come talk to me because I want to talk to you. That's it, man. That's all I can, right now, that's all I can say to them. What is something that you want to tell your wife? Babe, what can I say, babe? Uh, love you. Um, we did it. Uh, we're still doing it. Um, we got to keep doing it. Um, but we're doing, I think we're doing good. Um, there's some times where we felt overwhelmed. We lost patience with each other. But that's marriage. Um, we just have to get over those humps and be there for each other. And know that I love you. And I'll be there for you. It's so weird having you look at me and tell me that. I got <laughs> no, no, this is my sister. I know. It's they so funny. No, but uh, 
No, I love it, dude. Love you, man. I'm excited for what you guys are creating. And I'm definitely excited to have you back on here um, just as your experience raising twins. And who knows if there are going to be others. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll see, man. We'll see, man. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Let's I can see, see this. He's yeah. like, he's like, let's stay in the present. Let's stay in the present. Let's stay in the present. Let's let's do <laughs> these two right now. Yeah, I got. That's how you already know me. See, I gotta live now. I gotta live for the now, right now. Too funny. Thank you, brother. Thank you, bro. It's good.